All right, you guys, welcome back once again to the channel. So in today's video, I want to talk about the new Hellboy the Crooked Man trailer. Okay, so I don't know if you guys are fans of the Hellboy, um, like these last, I think it's like, it's been three movies now that have, um, that have, you know, like the live action movies that have now played with the Hellboy story. Um, the first one was with Ron Perlman, right? His Hellboy with Guillermo del Toro as the director which I think Guillermo del Toro just captures the horror just right, like just perfectly. Um, to me personally, I really like the whole uh, feel there of the story. And then of course, a couple years down the line, well, you know, short in a short amount of time, a couple years later, we have um, the second Hellboy movie, which didn't do very well because again, and this brings me back to like the comedy that I mentioned in my previous video um, for the uh, what was it for the Craven uh, reaction or my thoughts on the Craven trailer right I talked about how some films lean very heavily into comedy and that's usually what kind of affects them you know negatively impacts the film negatively um, so yeah the second one just kind of dealt or, or, or leaned heavily into that and it just kind of felt like too many jokes were in there and it just didn't feel as dark as the first one um, both of the of the Ron Perlman when Ron Perlman played um, you know, uh, uh, Hellboy, uh, those two films were, were not perfect. I mean, they, they had a lot of things that, I mean, I wish they were added into there, like a little bit more um, dark, you know, uh, dark uh, uh, elements. And, you know, it just, it was missing some of that, even on the first movie. But the first film was still a lot more, like, grotesque, and it had a little bit more darkness in there than the second one, right? So then finally, you know, a couple years after that, like a lot more years after that, we go on to a... Hellboy reboot which was David Harbour right with with David Harbour playing Hellboy and I actually really liked that design a lot better myself right I loved the design that they did with with the David Harbour he looked a lot like Leprechaun a little bit if you guys are familiar with like the you know 90s Leprechaun movies very much looked like that he had a very uh, very defined forehead on him and uh, a, a, a lot more of a sharper face right than the Ron Perlman uh, Hellboy. So I really liked that look. He looked a lot more menacing, very scary, very demon-like, and I think they did great with the makeup. Um, I would say that, like with the prosthetics, um, with the rest of the body, though, I can see even within the film, I can see some of the like. Um, for example, there's a scene where he's fighting uh, the three giants, which was my favorite fight of the film. Honestly, the last fight could have been so much better, but the fight in within that film with the three giants. Um, just uh there's a scene where he's he's fighting the last one like out of the three and there's a part where he tackles him right you can see him tackling the giant uh by his leg by his foot throws him down or takes him down and then as he's getting up you can see in the back of his hair right here right sorry about that had a call coming in <laughs> you can see at the back of his head right there's like this, you can see where the hair, like where the wig starts to kind of just kind of cut off abruptly. And I mean, I saw that immediately. I was like, oh, they, they could have, they should have cut that out or they should have, you know, digitally fixed that or something like that. I, you know, I, I think that was like a huge mistake. Um, and there's also, you know, even within that scene, there was a lot of mistakes in that movie. Uh, it definitely felt rushed, by the way. But anyway, there's, there was a scene where his arm switches from, uh, I think from his, uh, from right to left or something like that and, and as he's like fighting these giants and they totally messed up I think that it, it was a scene where he's turning the opposite direction But they just digitally flipped it right and they forgot to switch his arm, right? It just didn't make sense anymore So it definitely looked like it was just on the other arm magically like his uh, you know His the big rock hand that he has and then all of a sudden uh, It switches, you know, it was just really really weird and I caught that uh, so but nevertheless like uh, I, I really thought they did a, such a good job on that scene. That's how the, the whole movie, like with the whole blood and all of that, I was going, the violence that was going on in there, I thought that was really good. But the story just fell flat. Like I think the characters um, were just kind of meaningless. I did not like the, uh, oh, what is it, like the cheetah guy. He was really boring. I think um, his, his uh, transformation didn't even make sense. At the end, like you see him kind of transform back to his human form and then all his clothing is back just out of nowhere. But as he's turning into this cheetah, like does his clothing merge to the cheetah, or like I'm, you know, doesn't it rip off? And then when he comes back to normal, his his clothing is should be like shredded and all that. But in the end, we get this clip where 
um, at the end of the the you know the Hellboy movie with uh, David Harbor, like they're all fighting together, him and his you know his two of his friends. Uh, and so the cheetah guy is one of the friends there and he's like he turns into the cheetah and then at the end he comes back to his human form and his uniform is still on there and that's what I did I was like that's just lazy to me um, and the girl I don't even know what her name was uh, I think her superpowers were cool like there's a scene where they're fighting you know these kind of zombies that are coming out of the ground right and then she just kind of does this like punch where she punches she literally punches the soul out of a body I thought that was a really cool power but the character her was she was very unlikable um i just didn't i did i felt like her her charisma was not very great um and her lines were just you know not well delivered so i think that that film had a lot of um negative yeah a lot of negative reviews too you know didn't do very well i have the copy myself you know here because i still enjoyed it enough to you know to buy it and to watch it from time to time again and again right because I, I like how you know they they really made an effort to include some of these dark disturbing elements within it like you know the, it was a good interpretation uh, or portrayal of the demons like at the end of the film you get these like the demon army coming out like the uh, uh the blood the blood queen right she like unleashes all these demons from the ground and the designs were really cool I liked seeing the demons you know kill these like <laughs> you know end all the all the lives of the of the innocent people around the the town and all of that um and yeah i thought that was really cool but then it's just you know the fight fell short at the end and i just i was kind of let down um and then that vision where he's kind of like flying on the fire dragon and he's he jumps down from it i thought that was going to actually happen but it's just a vision he he ex kind of you know experiences um and so that was just kind of a let down too because that was shown in the trailers as well so i was really pumped for that um, now we have finally come to a new Hellboy reboot, reboot right? Which is with, um, uh, what is it? Jack Kessie, right? I believe the actor's name is Jack Kessie. And he actually played, um, oh, what is it? Um, oh, what, what is his name? Black, Black Tom or something like that, right? And the Deadpool 3, Deadpool 2, the, de the second Deadpool movie, right? Deadpool 3 was like awesome with Wolverine. So in the second one, he played this character, a uh, villain character in the prison, right? And, um, he, he pretty much, you know, uh, doesn't last, he doesn't last very long. Like he, he pretty much, uh, uh, gets destroyed like somewhere in the half, halfway point of the movie. So, you know, that was, that was fine seeing him there. I've never seen him in any other roles, but now he's, uh, he's casted for the Hellboy role. Um, so when I saw the trailer, right, I think the, uh, like the first, there's two trailers now released, by the way. When I saw the first trailer, I think his, uh, prosthetics did not look good. Um, I still like, I would, I would have to compare him to David Harbour's, uh, Hellboy because I think his prosthetics were a lot more, um, demon-like. And this one here just looks like a, a regular man, right? Um, not very, like, if you know, if you look at his face, you know, his nose is pretty normal sized. It's almost a, a, like a little bit big, if you know, if you look at it. And he looks, he looks a little silly in a way. If you look at him from some angles, he looks a little silly. And I think it's because of the nose. You know, I mean, if you look at my nose, I turn sideways, right? A little big as well, right? So I think that for me personally, that throws me off sometimes. Just looking at myself, you know, my nose here. Um, I've very been very self-conscious about my nose since I was like a lot younger, but now it's a lot less. But anyways, um, his nose, right? It kind of throws me off. And then there's not much like grittiness or roughness to the face, right? It's very soft. Um, I mean, not so super soft, but it is still soft. Um, not, it's not rough enough to like, you know, be like the Hellboy look, the official look of the Hellboy, uh, which he's like a demon, right? Comes out of the ground, um, out of, out of hell. So I, I just, yeah. Um, so also he looks a little clean, right? Um, especially his coat. If you guys look at his coat that he's wearing, like the, the Hellboy coat, the long one, uh, it looks very clean. Like if he just bought it brand new, you know, I mean, I would, I would love like some kind of dirtiness, some rustiness looking or, or like a rustic look. I mean, to the coat that would definitely enhance, uh, more of the grittiness of the film. Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit of issues I had with that with when it comes to the design of Hellboy, right? Um, and then the voice I think is great. I think, you know, there was some scenes, um, in the second trailer. Right. This review is based off of, of both, but mostly the second trailer, um, since it was a little bit more interesting to me, better than the first trailer for sure. You know, so I think that uh, when it came to his voice, you know, there's a part where he says, well, you didn't want me to you didn't want me to, to smash it or something like that. And the girl is like, no, yeah, smashing is good or something like that. 
I think that was cool. Like the way he delivered that line, um, even the way he like, uh, you know, loads his gun while the priest is saying like, oh, you don't believe in like in the word of God, like as protection or something like that. You know, I'm paraphrasing all of that. But and he was just like, you know, just in case. And he just loads up the gun or whatever. I thought that was really cool. Even in the angle, like they show kind of like from below and then he's just loading up that gun. Uh, that was cool. That was really cool. And uh, the body makeup looks cool. I mean, I can tell it's rubber like all the other Hellboys. Um, I, one of the things I always have a problem with is like, why can't they just get an actor that's extremely ripped? It's just like, it's just big. And they, all they got to do is just put prosthetics on his face and that's it. You know, I don't understand how they can't just go that route and then just paint his body red. A lot of people have painted their bodies green and red. And I mean, like, for example, take Gomorrah, right? In Guardians of the Galaxy, no prosthetics are on her. Um, even Nebula, like uh, the the actresses that play Gamora and Nebula in, Star- in Guardians of the Galaxy, they were just painted, right? Of course, Nebula has a lot more prosthetics to her, um, like with all the robotic parts and stuff. And there's a lot of digital things, um, you know, with her because, of course, she's a robot. Um, I noticed, though, by the way, in the second Guardians or sorry, the third Guardians movie, which was awesome. Um, she was, she looked a little like more filled up, if you know what I mean? Like she looked a little like chunkier, right? Um, very different from, from the first Nebula. Uh, and notice that she was, I noticed she was a lot more covered up and things like that. So, um, they definitely changed her body because I don't, I, I don't know. I, I, does she look like that in real life or did they purposely make her more, you know, a little bit, a little bit less thin? That's just what I'm trying to say, you know, honestly. Um, so with, with the Hellboys, it brings me back to the Hellboys. Like it's, it's all been, you know, prosthetics all over the body, right? And then they've got the, the pants covering the rest of the body and the big coat. But of course, eventually at some points the coat co- comes off and you have to see the body, right? So in the end, no matter how real they try to make it sometimes, it still looks rubbery. Um, it doesn't have that, like the, the, uh, the texture that a real body has, you know, when it's sweating, um, it's just that that like thin kind of uh you know surface of the skin it looks a lot thicker to where if you you know bend over like this or you bend your body left and right it'll just kind of like crease but a very thick single crease rather than multiple creases on the, of the skin you know in the david harbour movie he uh i mean there's a scene where he's on the couch uh he's talking to his his dad or the man that found him right that discovered him when he came out of the uh of the pit of hell or whatever um, he's talking to him in a room at the beginning of the movie and he sits down on the couch, you know, you can see him when he's moving around, he gets up like the, the body, the skin, uh, the skin specifically, obviously the body, it's, it's, it's fake, it's prosthetics and it's, it's not moving. It's not, <laughs> it's not folding. It's not creasing naturally. It looks very rubbery and very stiff. So that's one of the things that I've caught with these, you know, with all of these Hellboy designs. This one here, I'm not sure how it'll play out. I'm pretty sure I will be seeing that again anyways. But um, I am definitely impressed, you know, now stepping out of the design of the character. I, I am very much happy the way they're, uh, you know, turning it a lot more dark in this case. You know, like the um, the approach. The, they, they got the uh, the crooked man and the darkness in the trees, right? Very misty. Uh, it definitely is like the scene of uh, the David Harbour movie where he meets... Um, Baba Yaga, right? The big old like chicken house comes kind of walking towards him in that like very open forest, right? I think that was really, really cool. That was a, such a cool scene. Um, so it definitely feels like that's the environment in this film, right? In the Crooked Man now. It's all like just kind of, um, in the open, you know, like trees and forests surrounding a little small town. Looks like he's in a small town as well. So, uh, it's, it's all just taking place in this kind of like area surrounded by lots of trees. And this is kind of like where the crooked man just kind of hides within this this like creepy forest, you know, of, of very tall, skinny trees. I thought that was such a, a, I think this is such a cool world for this film. So definitely the setting feels good. The environment feels good. Um, the color grading is very dark. Very, very good. I like how they're um, going to that approach now, right? Rather than making it too colorful. And then, and then the last thing about the David Harbour uh, Hellboy movies uh, the, the last one that was made before this um, is the music that they chose, right? If you look at the transition of the scenes, the music doesn't even go. It just doesn't go. There was some, uh, you know, the music choices in there, like uh, where it was more instrumental and stuff. It was, it was, it was cool. It was fine, you know. But there, there's some where there were like more, you know, uh, more like kind of uh, what do you call that? 
like more dance to kind of music, you know, like it, it just didn't go. It just really didn't go. So, it, I mean, when they were transitioning between scenes like that, it, it threw me off completely. I was like, I don't, why are they putting this song, you know? I don't know why they're doing this. And then there's a scene too where they're going towards where the giants are in the David Harbour movie. And they put this like song, uh, how does it go? It's like, uh, it's like something like that, right? And it's like the guitar playing. Um, I know it, it slightly transitions to like a kind of a more darker uh, type of song when it gets to like, you know, where the where the people got attacked by the giants and you can see all this grotesque, like all these grotesque scenery and all that, like people just kind of chopped all over the place. It's disturbing. I like how the song transitions there. But in the beginning, they're running through the forest with these horses and it just looks silly. It just it just didn't feel like Hellboy, you know? It really just felt like a, a um, I don't know, man, like a, a funny type kind of a, like, I don't even know, like scary movie type thing. That's how it felt to me, you know? Like these scary movies, uh, the funny ones, right? The comic ones. It felt like that. So, you know, going back to this new one here, just based off of the trailer, I hope they don't do that. I really, I mean, I know it's going to have some comic relief in here. I'm expecting that, but I hope that it doesn't throw off the story. Um, I hope they keep that darkness going on because that is going to, you know, and make me invest into the Hellboy story. So I'm really glad that they went that way. And this actor, you know, that, that is playing Hellboy, I mean, I have faith in him, man. I, I don't, I haven't seen him in other films very much, but I think he's going to do great. Um, I'll just have to wait and see, you know, based off of his, um, uh, the, even the way he walks and moves and how he, uh, you know, does the act like the fighting, the all that with, with the Hellboy look. How is that going to go down, you know? But, I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, uh, most importantly, the thing that stands out to me, though, is his design. It just doesn't, it doesn't go, man. It just doesn't go. But I love how the environment and the, uh, some of the dialogue is also really good. Um, the story seems very haunting, like very scary and dark and all of that. And I love how they're going to that instead. That's really good. And that's what we, I think that that's what we need as, as, as Hellboy fans, right? Um, that are more, uh, co you know, committed to the comics, right? To the original source. Uh, yeah, we need, we need a lot more of that. Um, so anyway, you guys, that's pretty much my thoughts on this trailer. I'm, I'm still going to check out this movie. I'm excited to see what's going to go, uh, how it's going to go down. And I hope that the first reviews are good. But, um, in the end, even though this is a film, it definitely feels like a series. Let me know your thoughts on that. Does that look like a series to you? Because I feel like Hellboy Story, uh, I, you know, I'm sure it's a really broad, uh, very, you know, with a lot of characters, a lot of, a big, broad story. Um, uh, but in the films, it's just been like, it's always been lacking. Like, it's just, they don't have enough time to present certain characters in the Hellboy universe. So, um, this, this definitely feels like a series. And, uh, you know, I'm personally more into films. So I hope that this film, they make it uh, long enough, right? The, the, the runtime of it, um, to present, to introduce certain characters that, uh, that will stand out in the film, right? Not just kind of like, uh, well, we'll show you this character right now since it's the first film. And then in the second or third film, we'll, we'll bring like the real, like hard characters. You know what I mean? Like bring us a good, likable, or a, a scary, I mean, type of villain and all of that. You know, like the Crooked Man. I still have more to learn about the Crooked Man, but I hope that this character of the Crooked Man is super haunting and scary and they're not just like nerfing him or, or underperforming. I mean, I really hope that they give this film the best they can. Like these writers, these actors, these directors and all that. I really hope this make they make this count because the last one, I feel like they didn't really try very much and it, it had so much potential, so much potential, but I felt like it fell flat at the end. They just didn't try. And then, um, uh, what's, what's her name? The Blood Queen, uh, uh, Mila Jovovich's character, right? The lady from Resident, from the Resident Evil films. She wasn't good. I mean, I just didn't, I was not intimidated by her. I just think she was, she fell flat as a villain. Um, and I like her as an actress. I think she's great. But in this role, she just felt like flat and very much like more likable than unlikable, I think. I think I just didn't want her to, to die. I thought, I thought she was just going to be like a secondary villain. And then at the end, he was going to face like the ultimate villain. But yeah, just kind of didn't, didn't really go well with that. So anyway, you guys, what are your thoughts? Share them down below here. And thank you guys for listening to me in this whole entire video. I know I talk a lot. 
sometimes, but I really am into this stuff and I hope you guys are into it as well. So let, drop your thoughts down below you guys. Thank you for watching and I hope you guys have a rest of a good rest of your day. Bye. Peace.